Hi everyone, given all of the hype around the Apple Vision Pro, I was really excited to try it out to see for myself if the future really does hold a place for augmented reality. Being able to move windows around your space in the real world and just scroll through web pages just by moving your hands makes you feel like you have superpowers. However, I still don't think the Apple Vision Pro is ready to become mainstream, especially given its price. But as we stand on the cusp of this technological revolution, it's an opportune time to explore the creation of AR applications without having to break the bank. Let's just start with the devices that we carry around in our pockets. Today, I'm thrilled to walk you through the process of building a simple yet fascinating AR app that I've designed. This app lets you select pictures from your gallery and virtually hang them on your walls, framed beautifully as if they were part of your room's decor. This is a perfect beginner app for those interested in augmented reality and computer graphics that can be created in just a weekend. You can transform any living space of yours with pictures of friends and family. I wanted to create an art gallery, so I've decided to deck my room out with some cool AI-generated art. While this app is only for the iPhone and iPad, maybe I'll port it over to the Vision Pro as its developer tooling continues to mature over the next several months. To create this app, we're going to use Apple's own Reality Kit and AR Kit libraries, which makes AR development a breeze. I'm going to assume that you have some familiarity with Swift UI and have Xcode all set up on your Mac. Also, you'll need an iOS device that has iOS 13 or higher. It doesn't have to have a LiDAR sensor though. By the way, I'll have all of the code from today and supplemental resources down in the description below if you're interested about some of the more technical details. Just a heads up, this will be a two-part series just to make the video slightly more digestible. First, I wanted to quickly discuss what is Reality Kit and AR Kit. Well, there are libraries provided by Apple that make it very easy to create seamless AR experiences. ARKit is responsible for handling the real world side of things such as device motion tracking, world tracking, and scene understanding, while RealityKit is responsible for the virtual world side of things such as creating, rendering, and interacting with virtual objects. Anyways, let's get to creating this thing. We start off by creating a new Swift project. Open up Xcode, click Create New Project, choose Augmented Reality App, name the app, I named mine AR Gallery, and leave the other options their default values. I then choose my desktop as the location where I want to save my project. We then see the demo AR code in contentview.swift. I switch the build device to my iPad and build the app so we can run it. Note. Because we're working with AR, we will not be able to use any of Xcode's device simulators. We need a real device to test our app on. Once the app starts running, we can see that as soon as a flat surface is detected, a virtual cube is placed on it. As I pan my iPad around it, we can see how well the cube is locked in its position. Also, we can see reflections on it, which is pretty cool considering it's literally just a virtual object. Let's go through the sample code line by line so we can understand what exactly is going on. First, we import Swift UI and Reality Kit and create our content view, which is the main view in our Swift UI app. In it, we create an AR view container. Next, we define the AR view container. If you're not too familiar with Swift, just know that UI view representable acts as a bridge between older UI view views and newer Swift UI views, which is the more modern way to create iOS interfaces. We need to implement the make UI view function, which gets called upon the views creation. We create an AR view object, which is the view that enables us to use augmented reality. Now we create the cube model that was added to the scene. A model contains two parts, a mesh and a material. The mesh is the 3D representation of the cube, consisting of vertices, edges, and faces. The material defines how the mesh interacts with light. In this case, we set the cube to a gray color with a roughness of 0.15, which means it'll be pretty shiny. A roughness of 1 would mean the cube would appear diffuse. We also make it metallic. Finally, we combine the mesh and the material to create a model entity. The material is in a list because a model can have multiple materials. We also translate the model up by half its height so it sits flush on the table. Here, we're using the right-handed coordinate system, which means X is to the right, Y is up, and Z is towards you. Also, the unit for distance is in meters. Next, we create a horizontal plane anchor. An anchor is what connects, or anchors, our virtual models to the real world. In this case, we're looking for any horizontal surface in our room to be our anchor. There is a list of planes you can choose from, such as table or floor, but for now, 
any is fine. Apple's libraries already do the heavy lifting for us in determining whether something is a horizontal plane or not. Once an anchor is found, we append the model to the anchor's children. Finally, before returning our AR view, we add the anchor, which now contains the model, to the scene in our AR view. Now, let's make the default app a little bit more exciting. I'm going to replace the cube model with a model of the Earth. I got this model from Apple's own Reality Composer Pro. In Reality Kit, our models need to have the USDZ file format, which is the default in Reality Composer Pro. USDZ stands for Universal Scene Description Zip, which was created by Apple and Pixar together. I just add the Earth model to the scene and open the USDZ file in Finder. Then, I drag it into the same folder as our content view.swift. Now, let's change the sample code real quick. We remove all the code in section 1 and add the following. We first import the USDZ file, which already contains both the mesh and the material. Then, we calculate the height of the model using the minimum and maximum Y values of this mesh. We translate it up by half its height again. We keep the rest of the code the exact same. Running the app yields a very similar result as the first time, but this time we can see the earth in our room and move around it. Additionally, there are a lot of cool things you can do with these virtual models, like animate them to spin. Our AR gallery app won't be needing this feature today unless you want your pictures to spin on the wall. In that case, I'll leave this code in the repo for you to check out. What this means now is you can import virtually any USDZ file that you create or come across. Apple has another app named Reality Converter that allows you to convert a 3D model from many other popular file formats into a USDZ file that then you can use in your Reality Kit app. Well, we're creating an AR gallery, not an AR solar system, which now that I think about it would make a pretty cool project. But let's get back to adding some pictures. First, I dragged this JPEG file of a picture I took with my drone when I went skiing up in Tahoe. I then create a new image set in the assets section, naming it Tahoe and setting the scale to single scale. We still have to follow the same steps as before to create the image model by first creating a mesh and then a material. Our mesh will be a plane, and our material will be this image. We replace section 1 again. This time we define a scale variable that helps us control the size of the image plane before creating the mesh object, which is a plane. We make the plane have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is the ratio of our image. Because we had previously added the Tahoe image as an image set, we can just create an UI image object in the code and import the image but we need the underlying CG image data to create the texture resource. Dot raw means we're using the texture as is, rather than using it to store color data or normal data. Then, with the texture resource, we create the texture object. With the texture, we then need to create the material. We create a simple material and then set its color attribute to contain the texture we just created. There's an important distinction we need to make between textures and materials. A texture is simply an image, such as the one we used, or they can look like any of the following as well. A material, on the other hand, defines the optical properties of an object, such as its color and how it reflects light. A material typically encompasses multiple textures. For example, we could take a brick texture and make it into a metallic material, although that wouldn't be too realistic. Continuing by creating the model entity, the rest of the code looks pretty familiar, with the only distinction now being that we're looking for a vertical plane rather than a horizontal one. Now, when we run the app, we see that the plane with the image texture is placed as soon as a vertical plane is detected. It's a little shaky at first, but quickly stabilizes. As we move towards the side, we can see how the image is flush against the wall, as it should be. Right now, the picture is automatically added as soon as a vertical plane is detected. But obviously, we want the user to have some more flexibility. Let's add a button that will allow them to choose when to place the image. First, we update our content view to contain a state variable called should place. This variable essentially acts as a way for our button and the AR view container to speak with each other. Both are children of content view, so they're unable to talk to each other directly. We create a Z stack, which contains our AR view container and then a button on top of it. When the button is pressed, we set the should place variable to true. We also pass in the state variable to the AR view container. Next, we refactor our AR view container to have a binding variable, which means it'll take a state variable passed down to it by its parent. 
We also then have our make UI view only create and return the AR view. That code is now moved to update UI view wrapped in an if clause. This function is ran every frame. Whenever the user presses the button, the should place variable will be true, entering the if clause. Then our placement code will work like normal. At the end, we set the should place variable back to false, so the app is ready to place the next picture. The final line will run asynchronously on a separate thread because modifying a state variable while the view is updating results in undefined behavior. Now let's see what our app looks like. As we can see, whenever we press the button, an image is placed on a vertical plane. It seems like the image is usually placed in the middle of the screen, but I still accidentally placed one on my monitor. Oops. That's why we need to add a focus entity, which is a package that significantly improves the user experience. As you can see, it provides the user with additional information about whether a plane has been detected and where the image will be placed. Setting it up is really easy. All we do is go to file, add package dependencies, and paste the GitHub URL in the search box. After clicking add package and then making sure our app is the target, we click add package one more time and see focus entity appear on the left sidebar as a dependency that we can just import in our app. Next, we update our imports and add AR kit and focus entity and update our make UI view function with the following code. We create a new AR world tracking configuration object and set it to detect vertical planes. This is so our focus entity knows what we're looking for. Then we run the AR config. Finally, we create our focus entity and pass it in our AR view. That's it. When we run our app, we can now see the square in the middle of our AR view. If the entity only shows its corners, that means a plane isn't detected. If it turns into a complete square and aligns with a surface, we know that it's on a valid plane. Now that we have an AR world tracking configuration object created, let's see what other options it allows us to enable. The first line is really cool because it shows the mesh of the real world that AR kit creates as you move your phone around your environment. Here's a quick sample of what it looks like. We'll leave it commented out for now though. The next line tells AR kit to automatically create a cube map of the environment. Think of a cube map as literally a giant cube that all of your virtual objects are inside of, but you don't see the cube map. They're only used for reflections for the virtual objects, making them seem more grounded in the scene. Ideally, the cube map matches the environment you're in for accurate reflections. If you were to make your own, you would have to make a unique one for every potential environment each user might be in, or simply create a really generic one, which breaks the realism. Thankfully, with augmented reality, our camera is moving around the world that the user is in, so it's perfect that Apple's reality kit offers this feature for us. The next two lines allows for people and other real world objects to include virtual objects, again, further anchoring your AR scene in the real world. This final line checks if your devices have LiDAR. I believe all iPhone and iPad Pros have it. LiDAR stands for light detection and ranging and it sends out infrared light into your environment and measures how long it takes to bounce back, giving it uber accurate measurements of how far away objects are enabling higher quality AR experiences, but it's not necessary. So don't fret if your device doesn't support it. That's why we wrap it in an if clause and run it conditionally based on the user's hardware. While the cube maps are hard to notice because our image isn't reflective, here's a quick sample of the occlusion in action. As you can see, it's not entirely perfect, but it's still a cool feature to leave enabled. Let's add some more dynamism by allowing the user to choose pictures directly from their camera roll. We'll be using Apple's built-in photos picker view, which is really handy for situations like this. Let's quickly import photos UI at the top of content view, then add a couple new state variables. We add a new show photos picker boolean with a default value of true because we want the user to be able to jump right in and choose images as soon as they open the app. Then we create a list of photos picker items, which our photos picker view will load the images the user selects into. Finally, we replace our should place boolean with a picture to place variable of type UI image. We don't need the boolean anymore because this new variable serves the exact same purpose. If the variable is not nil, the user has selected an image for placement, and then this new data can now be transmitted to the AR view container via the app state. Now we have to go through a slight overhaul of the UI. Since this isn't a Swift UI tutorial, I won't be diving into each and every line but I'll leave some resources about the photos picker in the description. Note that the new 
new button in this UI now toggles the Show Photos Picker Boolean between true and false. When it's true, the Photos Picker will be displayed and hidden otherwise. But this is pretty much what our new UI looks like. This is very similar to how Flexbox works in CSS. Think about each UI element as a box and how the Z stacks, H stacks, and V stacks work together in a hierarchical fashion to organize the UI elements. Z stacks place elements on top of each other, H stacks arrange them horizontally, and V stacks vertically. The key thing to note is that the photos picker items will automatically change whenever the user selects an image. When that happens, we launch an asynchronous task to then load the image and store it into the picture to place variable as an UI image. We only want to place images one at a time, which is why we clear the photos picker item variable at the end. Photos picker item is the variable that only the photos picker interacts with, and after the async task takes the raw data from photos picker item and creates an UI image object from it, we store the UI image and picture to place. This is then passed to the AR view container via the app state. The AR view container never interacts with the photos picker item variable. Now let's move on to our AR view container. We replace the boolean binding variable with our new picture to place variable and update the if clause and update UI view. For the model creation, we have to change the order in which we do things because we want the plane to match the dimensions of the selected image. That's why we first create the text Texture resource. Then the mesh is created from the dimensions of the newly created texture with a scale variable that allows us to control the size. We also update the line of code in the task block at the bottom to reflect our new picture to place variable. When running this code, we see that the brand new photos picker pops up. And whenever we select a photo, it's immediately placed on the wall. If we wanted to enjoy our AR scene without it being obstructed by the photos picker, we can simply tap the button in the top right. A second tap brings the photos picker back were we to change our minds. Well, that's it for part one. We've made a lot of progress so far. I hope you're starting to realize how easy it is to get into AR development and just how expansive the possibilities are. I'll see you guys real soon in part two though, where we'll finish up the rest of the app.